What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games. And today, well, look, Age of Ascension is out now. And the name of the game is Keyforge, quite literally. The aim of the game is forging keys, quite literally. So with a new set out, we need to take a minute to have a look at all the different ways we can forge a key without just doing the whole paying six amber at the beginning of your turn malarkey. Now, I did do a video about all the options in Call of the Archons, so we're going to focus mostly on new options here. But just as a little bit of a reminder, there were actually two options for Untamed. Now, incidentally, all of the key cheating from Call of the Archons has been reprinted in Age of Ascension. All of the cards we had then to cheat keys, they all made it into Age of Ascension, which is pretty gosh darn cool. So Untamed had two options, but they were basically both the same. So we had Key Charge as an action card, and Jota Hazri as a creature. And when you played either of those cards, you lost an ember. But if you do, you could forge a key at current cost. Now when we say at current cost, we mean generally it will be six. But you never know if your opponent's going to be able to have something out that will increase the cost of forging a key. Think something like a Mermook, which will increase the cost of forging a key by one. And they were fine. I mean, the difference really is here. Something like Jota Hazri can be reused with Regrowth, which gets back creatures. Whereas Key Charge is a little bit more difficult to get back. Although you've always got stuff like Nepenthe Seed that can recover anything. Mars had Key Abduction. Now, Key Abduction's a bit of a complicated one. You return each Mars creature to its owner's hand, and then you can forge a key at plus nine current cost, reduced by one amber for each card in your hand. Now, this one really interests me when we get to Age of Ascension, because one of the new Mars cards we got was Martian Generosity. Now, Martian Generosity gets you an amber, and then you lose all your amber, drawing two cards for each amber you lost. So, if you're playing Key Abduction, what Martian Generosity can do is let you draw a huge amount of cards, including Key Abduction, but then you've got enough cards in your hand that you're able to forge a key without paying much, if anything, because, of course, you've got many, 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 many cards in hand. That's pretty gosh darn cool. I think Key Abduction is one of the more interesting ones in Age of Ascension, especially if you get it in a deck with Martian Generosity. We'll have to wait and see as people get more decks and play more games, how much this actually makes a difference going forward. Whether we do get really good decks with this. Now, Epic Quest is one that I don't think I've ever actually seen used. I'm not a huge fan of Epic Quest. When you play it, you archive each friendly knight creature in play. And it's got an Omni ability, it's an artifact. If you've played seven or more Sanctum cards this turn, you sacrifice it and forge a key at no cost. In order to use this properly, you need to have a really good archiving deck. So you archive a bunch of Sanctum cards, and then at the beginning of your turn, you get them all out your archive. But you've basically got to archive a bunch of Sanctum cards, then play Epic Quest... And then you've got to make sure that it's active, i.e. not exhausted, i.e. not the turn you play it, on the same turn as you pull a whole bunch of cards from your archive, and that gives your opponent time to try and play around it if they've got cards that can. I'm not a huge fan of Epic Quest. I've never seen it work. And then we also had Key of Darkness. This was a Shadows option. Forge a key at plus six current cost. But if your opponent has no amber, you forge a key at plus two current cost instead. Now, bearing in mind that Shadows is really good at stealing amber, there's a pretty good chance that you can get your opponent down to zero and then forge a key. Really, and this is largely anecdotally, but it seems like Key Charge and Jota Hazri were the best options we had in Call of the Archons. Certainly they're the ones I've seen used most often, and in my decks I've gotten Key Charge off quite a lot, I don't know if I've ever actually got key abduction working. Not more than once or twice. Now we got three new options in Age of Ascension. And I think there is a clear ranking 
of one, two, and three of the new options. So coming in at number three, we've got Redacted. On the face of it, Redacted looks like one of the most interesting, one of the most exciting cards in the entire set. Certainly when I was lucky enough to do the stream from Birmingham, and during the stream, me and Alex had a chat about Redacted. It was a good enough, most exciting card that I wanted to have a chat on the stream about it. But I don't know if it's good. So, Redacted is an artifact, and every time you choose logos as your active house, you place one amber from the common supply on Redacted. And when there are four amber or more on it, you sacrifice it and forge a key at no cost. Bearing in mind, you can forge a key at the beginning of your turn because you've got six amber. Then you choose logos, put your fourth amber on redacted, forge a second key at no cost. So even though you've just forged a key and used all your amber, it doesn't matter because it doesn't cost any amber. Surely there's got to be a downside. And, and frankly, ladies and gentlemen, there is a downside. And frankly, the downside is, I don't think this is essentially ever going to work. Because here's the thing, in order to use this, you've got to have it down on the field and then you've got to have four more logos turns after you put it down onto the field. So you've got to play it logos turn number one and then logos turn number five, you get to forge. Well, I mean, the best way to think about this, just pay attention next time you play a game of Keyforge. Count how many times you choose each house. And Logos is not the best house in Age of Ascension. It's a great support house. We got loads of stuff like Professor Sutterkin, which is just really good at drawing. I'm a huge fan of Helper Bot, which is a little bit of key cheating. But the fact of the matter is, it's not the best house. I've got some Age of Ascension decks with Logos in, but I generally don't choose them like five turns in a row. The thing is, it's only your fifth Logos turn if you've got Redacted Turn 1. If you don't have Redacted Turn 1, then it's your 6th Logos turn or your 7th Logos turn. And that's before we talk about the fact that your opponent can just get rid of artifacts. Hey, your opponent plays a bare-handed. Well, now, unfortunately, all artifacts go onto their opponent's deck. So, you lose all the amber, so now it's five logos turned from now. There's a million different cards you can use to get rid of artifacts. I can't go into them all now. But the fact of the matter is, to get Redacted working, you are basically relying on having it in your hand on your first logos turn, and having five logos turns, and your opponent playing nothing that can stop your artifacts. Yeah, it's going to work sometimes. It's just not going to work all that often. And that's genuinely a, a little bit sad. The second best new option we've got in Age of Ascension is Night Forge. Now, this is kind of cool. Because what they really did in Age of Ascension was even it up a little bit. In Call of the Archons, we had four houses that had key cheating cards. In Age of Ascension, they made that up to six. This still doesn't have one. But Knife Forge gave a second option to Shadows, which of course already had Key of Darkness. Now, Knife Forge is a card that looks very much like the designers went, yeah, th let's make this good, but let's make sure it's not broken. Gives you an amber bonus, and when you play it, you may forge a key at plus four current cost if you've not forged a key this turn. Oh, cool. So if you forge a key at the beginning of your turn, you can't use this. You also cannot chain Night Forge. So you cannot use Night Forge and then maybe use an Apemphasy to use a second Night Forge and forge two keys in one go. That's not an option, ladies and gentlemen. We aren't going to let you do that. Boo, hiss, etc. It makes it just objectively worse than Key Charge. This basically forges a key for 10. Key Charge forges a key for 7 and can be reused with something like Nepenthe Seed. So Night Forge is very much a poor man's key charge, but it does give you an amber bonus when you play it, but it's still worse than key charge because, well, it essentially forges at plus three, whereas key charge forges at plus one. So it's still worse. And yeah, that's, um, that's weird, right? It's just not as good. 
Still better than Key of Darkness, admittedly, because Key of Darkness is plus six. Oh, maybe plus two. So yeah, Shadows have another option. It's fine. It'll work sometimes. But the best new option in the set is Might Makes Right. I feel really strongly about this. I think Might Makes Right is awesome. Now, you've got to have the right deck list. There are going to be plenty of decks where this is rubbish. But in the right deck list, Might Makes Right is amazing. Might Makes Right reads, gives you an amber bonus. You may sacrifice any number of creatures with a total power of 25 or more if you do forge a key at no cost. Here's the thing. It does not say ready creatures. Or Brobnar creatures. Now to be clear. You can only sacrifice your own creatures. You cannot sacrifice your opponents. But it means that you can play a bunch of creatures down. Then immediately sacrifice them. And play Might Makes Right to forge a key. And let's not forget that in Age of Ascension. We have Lollop the Titanic. And Lollop the Titanic is an 11 power creature. If you can find a deck with a couple Lollop the Titanic and Might Makes Right. Now, we've not seen enough from Age of Ascension, incidentally. There may well be things in the algorithm that prevent this from happening. It might be that you cannot get Might Makes Right and free Lollop the Titanic. It might be impossible. Because we know that things like this are put into the algorithm to stop certain things happening. But there's still some pretty powerful creatures. Foozle, sitting there at a 5 power. Groggins, sitting there quite nicely at an 8 power. Troll, now admittedly Troll isn't actually in Age of Ascension, but maybe you get it as a legacy card. Sitting there as an 8 power. The point is, we've got some really powerful Brobnar creatures. And... If it's possible under the algorithm, someone's going to get like two Groggins, two Lollop the Titanic, and a Might Makes Right. And we taught this on the stream. We did on the stream this past weekend see someone play Might Makes Right. I'm not a huge fan of Brobnar. They are my least favorite house. But this might be my favorite of the key cheating cards. Because something like Key Charge, I love Key Charge. And I love the fact that you can play it in the middle of your turn so your opponent doesn't get a chance to play something like a doorstep to heaven to stop you forging. But it's very unlikely you're going to forge at the beginning of your turn and then play key charge. You just won't have the amber. Might makes right, however, you very way well be able to. And even if your opponent sees it coming, can they take out multiple Lollop the Titanic? Yes, if they've got free fates but no in a whole bunch of other situations. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you can cheat your way to forging keys as of Age of Ascension. I would very much like to know which one's your favourite, though. So please do let me know in the comment section. Go nuts! Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, and follow me on Twitter at the Wossie, where we talk about a whole bunch of games. And don't forget, we started covering Final Fantasy TCG on this channel now, so, you know... Maybe check those videos out. Maybe make me happy. But by far the most important thing as always, and the thing that would make me the happiest, look after yourselves till next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wassy Plays.